Good. Okay. okay, so let's, I want to say fairly briefly how to make things make sense, because I feel like the making things make sense is the, is uh, what's, what's important is that you can make things make sense, not, not how exactly you do so. Um, and I'm not convinced this is the perfect way to make things make sense. They're just like many ways of making your definitions work. So, but just to make this sound, uh, uh, show that the arguments are kind of robust. And really what this is saying is that bot periodicity is very robust, that it works, that, uh, so, uh, the, so the, I'm gonna describe a setting in which our arguments work over any reasonable base. So over the complex numbers, if we want to talk about topology, but it can work over any field or even over the integers, then we'll be able to base change to change our, our base. And we can have Hodge theory, homotopy types, say tall homotopy types. We can work in growth ring. Um, so if you don't know what these words are, it doesn't matter the point is you just, these standard things you want to potentially have, you can have. They're just gonna, they're gonna be kept long for the ride. Um, and the one thing we will need, so I guess those are the things that are like maybe added bonuses. And then in the course of the argument, we'll need to have things like stacks and co-limits. But again, that's, I already told you not to worry about. And then you'll see, we'll have to worry too much about that. So, okay, so here's what, here's the, here's how, here's one way of making things you can work with. And if you are a, um, a fetishist for infinity categories, there's an infinity category version two. Uh, so, so, so you just start with the reasonable spaces we're thinking about. And you may disagree that these are reasonable spaces, but uh, say smooth, irreducible, nice art and stacks. And I think everyone agrees that these things are all nice. And then I'll like forget, don't worry about that. But start with reasonable spaces, think reasonable geometric spaces. And then what I want to do is define when a map, a, a topology like map, where uh, I, I want to say uh, when a map is, uh, highly connected in topology language. I'm gonna say when it's basically an isomorphism up to high co-dimension. So let me define what I mean by that. So I'll call this class of morphisms iso co-dimension K, things that are isomorphic, essentially isomorphic up to co-dimension K. And the first example I'll give you in the definition will show you how it's slightly unusual, which is I want a vector bundle. If X to V to Y is a vector bundle, I wanna call that an isomorphism because as far as topology is concerned, that should be, if you're over, it, that should be an isomorphism or if you're dealing with chow groups or any of the sorts of things we talked about, it is basically an isomorphism. It's not really an isomorphism, but I'm gonna want it to be an isomorphism topological. And in the course of our argument, we had to be able to take affine bundles. And uh, so that's, so, so I want that to be an isomorphism in any co-dimension. And the section of the vector bundle should also be something which should be considered essentially an isomorphism from the point of view, of any of the sorts of things we've been talking. Uh, and secondly, if something is an open embedding, uh, uh, and something smooth and something smooth, uh, except you throw it something of co-dimension K, I want that to be an isomorphism of the co-dimension K. That's a very reasonable thing. So in terms of like the topology that they should look very similar in terms of homotopy groups, if you know about things like that. And then finally, in my definition, I'll just declare that if two out of three morphisms, if I have two morphisms composing to give a third, if two of the three are in this class, the third is as well. So I just make it a nice class of more than that. That's what, it's a rigorous definition. And now I'll tell you what my cat new category is gonna be. They're just gonna be convergent sequences, by which I mean a sequence of a maps of our nice spaces. And I want them to converge in the sense that they are getting to be isomorphisms in higher and higher codimension. So it's an infinite sequence uh, and they get to be iso, isocodim higher and higher and higher as you go farther and farther. Away. So that's, that, that's a reasonable thing. It's a code, it's a, think of it as like a convergent sequence of our spaces. If you want to think like a topologist, it's like converging to some topological space and you know what that is. And then what's a morphism of these sequences? Well, you might not be surprised that I want, I want maps. I'm not going to require that they go uh, nice and horizontal. They can, just like a, you might imagine with the convergent sequence, all that matters is that the maps have to go kind of upwards. That's a map of Cauchy sequences with some equivalence relation. There's one caveat that these guys don't have to commute. They only have to commute up to A1. In other words, if you if something is mapping and you can slide it over by a homotopy, by A1, to get something else, that should count as the same map. Uh, so, so that's a one caveat that we'll toss in. We saw that when we pushed forward things and we had, uh, well, we actually did see that in the course of, of the proof. 
But again, when it comes to any of the things we talked about that we wanted to have in our desiderata, uh, that was all fine. So we just want maps of Cauchy sequences where the squares or whatever these rhombi are, uh, trapezoids, to be essentially commuting up to, up, up to these aliens. And that's it. Uh, one last thing I want to say is that I want to then say if I've got a map of these guys and their, iso, their isomorphisms in go dimension K for all K, I want to call that an isomorphism, like a vector bond, because uh, that's the last reasonable thing I want to have. And so the definition is contrived to make all the things we wanted to be true be true, and all the properties we wanted to have, we have them. So uh, that's basically it. So it's a, so it's a, but, and again, this is not cheating. This is how you do science. Like you make your definitions after you, you figure out what's true and then you figure out the words for what you want to say. And again, I will say explicitly, this does give a proof of original. Like if you, if you take the original space, if you take the space you defined here and you take restrict to the complex numbers and take analytification and take homotopy type, that map is the bot periodicity map. This is a, you get a, that, this does give a proof of bot periodicity, but this is, Honestly, an enrichment of that. In, in, of that. So I will. So that ends my attempt to. That's the complex bot periodicity, and I now want to deal with the eightfold clock, which is going to get uh, uh, even uh, more fun. And the way in which it gets more fun is the way in which we guessed what that bot map was. That gets more fun with chasing bundles around, and it's things exactly what the topic of this seminar, Lagrangian. Uh, yeah, right. As max, maximize profit cross money, and it's it's exactly the bread and butter of what you know what uh, what we like to think about. So let me stop for a second and ask if there are questions about complex bot periodicity. Where we define the map, uh, we showed us an isomorphism by explicit by, and you even saw the entire argument. Uh, basically, the entire argument was given, although details were made. And it's a philosophy, of course. I want to get across. Great. So let me let me now try to so now I'm going to switch over to uh, to uh, to the period eight case and the, uh, what happened is I well I gave a talk on the period two case and there's this uh, great paper from uh, like the previous millennium of uh, uh, of uh, that in a previous lifetime when Jim was in a different field uh, he, uh, he, uh, when he was a topologist uh, he uh, he wrote which looks like, again, it looked like algebraic geometry without really admitting to be algebraic geometry and it suggested this should be true. So here's what bot periodicity is. Here's what the, here's the period eight case. So the, uh, so what it's all about is this eightfold thing where loops of uh, each thing is the next one, loops one of each thing is the next one. I'm always talking about loops two. So what I'm gonna, uh, if you have questions after, I'm happy to tell you why, Loops one is 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 not at all surprising, uh, at least half the time, and I'm sure we'll figure out the other half in the next little while too. So uh, so this eightfold thing where it's loops one, loops one, loops one, loops one, loops one, loops one. Instead, what I like to focus on is the the this sort of interior square, and then if you understand the square, you'll understand the others as well. Uh, and so here we're going to have maps of the sphere into, we're, we're saying that the maps of P1 into BO, uh, uh, into BO should end up being the same thing as a point of this. Maps of P, point of P1 into this should be a point of this. Maps of point of P1 into this should be a point of this, and maps of P1 into this should be a point of this. And that's what I'm about to try to explain to you. So let me start with this part of the, the square. And I should say this has got some sort of sort of rotational almost symmetry. Uh, so I'm really going to, what I'm going to do will work, apply just as well to the part. So uh, what is SP mod U? Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let me just focus on uh, finite dimensional approximation, which is going to be SP mod 2N mod GL. So what this is, is the, at least what I would call the isotropic uh, Lagrangian Grassmannian. You can let me know if I'm, if I'm saying this the wrong way. So what it's doing is it's parameterizing. You have a 2N dimensional complex space. Let's do this over the complex numbers and then abstract and say something over a general base. Uh, you have a two n dimensional space. It's got this inner pairing. It's got the symplectic pairing. So it's got a map to its, to its dual. Uh, it's got a map from to its dual and it satisfies the fact that it's symplectic means this. 
and it's two dimensional. And what I want to do is have inside it an isotropic maximal dimensional subspace, in other words, an n dimensional subspace of V that pairs with itself zero. So uh, now I want to map P1 to this space. So what does that turn out to be? What, so, uh, so this is something which I think even some people in the audience have thought about in some ways, in very deep ways, uh, in terms of quantum cohomology of, of maximized profit cross mining. I'm going to have some, uh oh, I'm going to have some, that's good. Uh, is it back? Hey, Robbie. Yep. Is my, is it, can you see my screen, I should say, first of all? I cannot. No. Okay. No, okay. I think to get that isotropic Grassmannian on the nose, you need to divide by the parabolic that contains GLN, not GLN. Uh, okay. In that case, I will say- So up to A1 and whatnot, you know, that's nothing. Okay, but, but I think I will, to uh, say those words on the nose, I think you want the parabolic, not the, not the GLN. That makes sense. And I'm not going to try to correct myself because I'll say something wrong. Uh, great. So it's so it's almost, but not quite, this. Uh, and maybe more alarmingly, you cannot see my screen anymore. Right? This is. Uh, you uh, cannot so, see your screen. Correct. Okay. So let's see what happens when I go to. Give me one second. Share content. Share screen. Start broadcast. But you know the robots at Zoom recognize that you made that mistake with the parabolic, yeah. and it just they booted me, you they, off. They shut me, they shut me down. I, I'll be kicked off Twitter as well after this. this is, uh, okay, so it's not exactly an absolutely isotropic cross mining. And I'm not even sure exactly how it's not now at this point, but Jim knows how it's not. But roughly speaking, it's got to be the following thing. Uh, I'm sure it's the following thing, which is uh, what we're, so what, what is loops two? I'm, I'm now going to describe uh, up to these A1s. This is why I'm playing fast and loose with, with vector spaces and A1s, which are contractible. What is loops two of SP mod U? And I, I want to put something like this there. And maybe this is going to be right. I'll get Jim is nodding. And so what happens is I put my vector space V in the middle. It's a trivial vector bundle now. So this is a bundle. These are bundles on P1. And I put a trivial bundle in the middle. One thing I learned I did not know before is that I could I, I would just put a trivial bundle in the middle. And instead I'll put uh, a bundle and it's dual, both of rank n, uh, and just it's the same thing. But it's and there's the there's the there's the inner product, there's the pairing right there. And so I'm parameterizing vector bundles E uh, such that they're dual, so that such that you get this self-dual exact sequence like that. So that's a map. That's what I'm parameterizing. And now when I parameterize this, I'm mapping like a P1, I think into this nice projective variety, this Lagrangian Grassmannian. And it's got a degree. And that degree is, I hope I'm going to say this right, the degree of the spectra bundle. And so what I want to do is let that degree go to, an, I'm going to claim that as this degree goes to infinity, this is going to stabilize. Or, but differently, when the degree is low, I'm going to get some approximation to my final answer. So what I want to do is I'm going to tell you, anytime I have a something like this, anytime I have an element of of loops two of SP mod U, I'm supposed to get a vector space with an orthogonal pair, uh, with an orthogonal pair. So where do I get that? It's got to be some very simple recipe from bundles on P1. And this is something which I half expect. I have a, I feel like it's a 50% chance that someone's going to say, oh yes, of course, it's going to be this following thing. And there's 50% chance that, oh, I have no idea. So I don't know whether uh, anyone's going to have seen this before. Uh, I'll, I don't, I'm not going to put it in your own spot. I'll show it to you, and then you can say you've seen it. Uh, uh, but, I, 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 but I feel like I, I would not. I only when you know to look for this would I have guessed it. So uh, great. So uh, so uh, let's see if I uh, great. So 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 all oh, right. So there are the maps to uh, P1 SP uh, mod GL. So uh, so here's what I'll do. I'll I'll twist this by minus one. And then I'll take the long exact sequence in cohomology. And now these guys are trivial bundles in the middle. So they've got no H0 or H1, because it's a trivial bundle twisted by O of minus one on P1. So I get H0 of E of minus one. And that goes 
to H1 of E dual of minus one. And that goes to H1 of the guy in the middle, who's also zero. But this guy, by serial duality, is H0 of E of minus one dual. So there is my vector space, who is exactly the same vector space that I called A back when we talked about complex uh, bot periodicity. That's not, that's a, we have seen this vector space before. And we get a map from A to A dual, and that's our map we're looking for. And it turns out uh, 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 that that is a, that's symmetric. Not uh, not anti-symmetric. So we turned our anti-symmetric thing into a symmetric thing. So that's that's that is that map. That's our beta. And then how do you go in the other direction? How do you the the other uh, the other rotation O mod U to BSP? It just works exactly the same with the signs changed, uh, and you, and everything just works as is. The signs somehow change magically. So that's the so that tells you this map and this map, and then you have to worry about what, what magic this map gives you an isomorphism. So you magically get this, you have this surprising map, and even better, this will give you an isomorphism. Okay, so now let me do the other, finally, for my, my final trick, I guess, is to get a map from P1. So I, need, I will tell you about this direction and equivalently this direction. So if I give you a map from P1 to BO, then I need to get a point of this. In other words, if I have a bundle on P1 with an orthogonal structure, so it's a bundle on P1, it's rank N, and I'm, and I'm gonna assume, uh, so we're given a rank N bundle and it's isomorphic to its dual by something where phi dual is phi. That means I've given like a bun vector bundle on P1 and it's got this nice pairing over all of P1. I need to somehow find a point of a Lagrangian Grassmannian. Where will I find this Lagrangian Grassmannian? And again, I feel like, this has been seen before, and I'm thinking about, in particular, like that. There is this, this. Uh, uh, well, I don't see the connection, but this book, Crash Kravakis two-step trick, uh, uh, that I, I, I just, but I don't see the connection yet. Uh, uh, okay, great. So here's what I'll do. So I will, I will tell you what the map is to an isotropic map Maxwell less money. So the thing about E is it's isomorphic to its dual. So it can't be positive. It can't have only positive sum ends. When you take its splitting type, it's got to be symmetric. It's got to be like, it's going to have some negatives and like it could have some negatives and some positive. And only if in the most generic case will, will they all be zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict myself to an open set, just like we did in the uh, initial plot periodicity case. So let's restrict to a big open set where E of K is non-negative. And then we'll just check that this behaves well when we take E of K, E of K plus one, E of K plus two, and so forth. So if E of K is non negative, now here's what I'm going to do I take E of K minus one and E of K minus K minus one, and I take their, and I take the quotient. So that's a vector bundle on P1. That's a vector bundle on P1. And this map is like you multiply by the coordinate at infinity. And so this thing is supported, set theoretically at that one point, at our one fixed point. And now once again, I take what would you expect me to do? You're going to expect me to, you expect to see long as I see what's in cohomology, you'll see serial duality, and you'll see, what else will you see? All the same pieces are there put together in a different way. So when you take the long exact sequence in cohomology, well, H naught of this guy is zero because uh, of the numerology. Uh, and it, so I have H naught of this guy goes to whatever this thing is, goes to H1 of the, to, it goes to H1 of this thing. But H1 of this thing, well, E's and E dual are isomorphic. And then by serial duality, that's H naught of E of K minus one dual. And there you go. And, and this thing is once again, our same A. The thing that you take the bundle that was non-negative, twist it by minus one, take H naught. It's the same, it's the same space we've been seeing all the time. And now there we go. We have a bundle, we have its dual, and we have something in the middle, uh, and it turns out the sequence is self-dual. Uh, and, uh, and so that is, that's telling us the map like this, and exactly the same thing with the signs changed to protect the innocent, uh, uh, gives you the maps like this. Uh, and so uh, and so what this, and then when asked to show uh, that these, this gives you an isomorphism, and again, what you need, exactly the setup, a good sign that the definition 
that was in the middle, brief middle third was a good set of definitions, is that definition is all you need to make this argument work as well. Um, you know, so, okay, so let me just sum up and show that, that uh, the way bot periodicity works is the way, and the way I think often it gets seen, partially because mathematics is advanced so much that it's gotten kind of fractured uh, over time. And then people who learn topology don't talk to the people who learn algebraic geometry unless they switch fields like Jim did. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 uh, it, it's, and so there, the, there's bot periodicity and you have these maps in bot periodicity and they're often, uh, they look scary and they're often defined by analytic means because they do have clean analytic definitions, not that they're the wrong definitions, but they're so blunt and fundamental that they come up naturally algebraically as well in elementary ways by just following through sort of the exact sequences you see when talking about just bundles on P1. So that is, so, um, so that's, so that's the story I wanted to try to get across. And I hope you ask questions so you can not be befuddled by words you just hadn't seen before because it's, uh, it's neat how the pieces fit together. So thank you very much. Thanks very much, Bravi. Um, I could be heard and I could see other people clapping in silence. Um,